Oh yeah, we will definitely continue that story, Makina. Because there ain't no way I'm dropping this from how far I've come in this series. Wait a minute, and welcome to the Anime, and welcome back to... Gurisaya no Kajitsu, or The Fruit of Grisaya. Wow. <clears throat> the last episode was so wholesome. Like, they learned so much more together about each other, especially Makina with um, Yuji, that you just have to go in. And also, I'm a bit concerned about the sprite in the corner. Um, Yuji? You good? <laughs> There's no sirens, right? <laughs> I'm joking. Anyway, without any further ado, Yuki Mishuka. Hmm. Uh, which one was I telling you again? What? Again? I've already told you that one three times already. Three times today. Oh, you really like this stuff for some reason, don't you? I'm not sure why she finds this sort of thing so interesting, but Makina's burning to hear my stories lately. The flower pot, the cat and the severed head, his name was Ryback, unlucky Zippo. Where's the telephone? At to Island. From among this fairly well varied assortment of anecdotes, there's one in particular that's clearly become the girl's favourite. Specifically, 180 meters from scrubbing the jaw. <laughs> What? Right, so this is back when I was 14 years old, attending Uncle Sam's school in America. One day, I ended up making a bet with a classmate. I'd been distinguished myself as I'd been distinguishing myself as a sniper at the time, and this particular classmate kept coming at me with this stupid line: "What's with the rifle speciality? Isn't your name Uzi? No, it's Yuji." <laughs> and not only did I not fight back, I didn't show the slightest sign of irritation at the stupid joke. Which eventually pissed my classmate off pretty badly. They ended up challenging me to a bet, hoping to knock me down a peg. The bet itself was about as simple as they get, as they come. I had to land a shot on a can of tomatoes from 200 yards. It sounded pretty damn pointless, so I refused to play along at first. But when my classmate offered to take over a week's worth of laundry duty if I won, my perspective on the matter changed. <laughs> yep, just uh, take that time off and take the L. After managing to bargain my way up to the three shots, I ultimately accepted the bet. There was one major problem. The rifle I had to use. Oh, yeah, it looks so different. At the time, I didn't have authorization to use anything but the, the small ball and its 22 caliber rounds. So, inevitably, the gun I was using for this bet was such a two... Uh, was just such a 22 LR bolt action rifle. Normally speaking, you won't you want to be firing a small bore rifle at 20 to 25 meters, so hitting it past 200 meters. Oof. The bullet itself can travel a good 1,600, but the effective range normally maxes out at less than 100. Not only was I using this thing for a shot from 200 yards, oh, it's not meters, it's yards, or slightly over 182 meters. It was taking place outside where I'd have to deal with wind. Yep, because that can change the trajectory of a bullet. Felt like pretty shitty odds, but on the second round I managed a solid hit. Naturally, that meant I was the winner of our bet, but unfortunately, one of the instructors found out I'd taken the rifle without permission, so instead of a laundry free week of leisure, I ended up ordered to scrub latrines until shit smelled like daisies. <laughs> Damn. But apparently the tomato can I shot is still enshrined in the school cafeteria, along with photographic evidence. Hey! <laughs> I'm not trying to get all nostalgic about my wild youth or whatever, but I can't help smiling a little wryly. More at my inability to tell Makina a halfway decent bedtime story than anything else. But when I finally snapped back to reality, back to reality, um, I realized that Makina closed her eyes and begun mumbling in her sleep. Aww. The lengthy trip and weeding in the sun must have tired her out after all. Feeling more than a little relieved, I quietly leave the cabin with my cell phone in hand. Although, there is a tower relatively close by, the signal's not particularly good inside the cabin itself. I walk off a little ways until the meter at the top of my screen displays three bars, then call at the contacts list and select Komini Sachi's name. Oh! After about three rings, she picks up the phone and instantly, not even bothering to say hello, begins hurling questions at me. 
ちらにおられるのです、wow. 先ほどから何度かお電話をさせていただいていたのですが Ah, sorry. The reception is not so great out here. 帰りが遅いので皆さん心配しておられます何時頃にお戻りになられますか Right, about that. We're actually still in Yamanashi. Makina has already fallen asleep, so for tonight we're going to stay out here. Then head back tomorrow on r a n d new. Yeah. Otomari. Sorry for the trouble, but would you mind looking after Makina's crawfish and apple seedling while we're away? Sachi. Sachi! Oh no, the signal's fine. I could hear you the first time. No need to repeat the question 20 decibels louder. m i c h i i <laughs> 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 See, now look what you've done. That noisy blonde's in full squawk. Uh, not a problem, I guess. She just casually knocks out m i c h i r u Oh. She actually did. <laughs> oh my god, she did. Huh? Hey, Sachi, what was that sound? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Let's see, sorry for the hassle. Yeah, that's right. We should be back tomorrow afternoon, so I doubt that it'd be a problem, but I'd appreciate it if you just keep an eye on them. Hmm. Hmm. Thanks. I'll make sure to bring you some hotto and black honey rice cakes as a souvenir. Hmm? What's up? <laughs> She did actually say that, you know. She actually did say that. Not to worry, I picked up a 24 pack of. Honto, you won't do it, you're not going to do it. He's actually got them. It's a joke. Don't clam up on me. <laughs> Sachi, I know we've done your route, but how long, how long do you think this guy can last? I'm telling you it was a joke. I'm not going to do anything. In the first place, m a k i n is already asleep, remember? <laughs> <laughs> no! You're really determined about this, aren't you? <laughs> Damn it. I'm going to hang up now. <laughs> <laughs> Night. What's going on with that girl? I feel like there's a lot of venom in her tongue lately. And the problem solving is definitely getting a little on the violent side. <laughs> Just smash this something over Michiru's head to make her shut up. <laughs> oh, poor Michiru.、Uh, I'm gonna need Michiru seem to think it's entirely my fault, but I don't remember giving Sachi any orders to act like this. You didn't. In fact, I make every effort to give her only strictly appropriate instructions. But come to think of it, there was that one incident the other day. I was telling Makino another one of my stories and paused to note the most efficient ways to help a panicked doctor so I could t e r r i n g in the kind of presence of mind in a foxhole. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Oh dear. Sachi, who had been listening in, nodded with deep conviction and com commented, I see. In other words, blunt weapons are the best medicine for derangement. Surely unrelated. Just another example of the female need to、uh, blame every problem on a man. Damn! This sort of unfounded generalizing is probably exactly the kind of thing that turns women against us. <laughs> Jesus, this is becoming a sermon! But it helps me regain the necessary composure to make my second call. I choose Amine's number and return the phone to my ear. How many tones is it going to take?、Uh, three. A completely unfamiliar woman's voice. 
Oh, it's just a phone. Uh oh. Who the hell are you supposed to be? That is on my. I pulled the phone away from my ear and double checked the screen, but I'm definitely connected to the number marked Suwamini. Is that her mum? Yeah, it's me. Who the hell was that woman? Oh. Ah. You people aren't dowling in hard drugs, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a name my friend. I prescribe a dose of blood wafer. <laughs> On the other side of the line, I hear the sound of Armony opening the door, and a chorus of shrill voices hoot hooting at her. Yeah, that's right. I just had to hear that voice of yours, so I couldn't help giving you a call. Did I make a nuisance of myself? I see. Alright then, enough joking around. Let's get to the main topic. Damn. Damn. He's still a lady killer. Here's the thing. I'm a name. Makina and I are currently in Yamanashi. Hokamairi. That's right. Came with the came up with the idea pretty suddenly after we saw you off this morning. I brought your Bobotaro. Bobotaro for the trip. Hmm. Yeah. You've been having trouble with the engine suddenly dying on your random times, right? The CDI is probably the issue. <laughs> CDI. Yeah, see my eyes. You're riding a hot rod and you don't even know that much? Damn. Oh? Bikeyasanka. Okay, so the person at the bike shop was the weirdo. What kind of store would sell a ridiculous low rider like that? You got your license at 16? Uh, that's very irresponsible, but fair. Mm. Fair enough. The wiring inside the CDI is probably swelling from the heat, disconnecting it temporarily. Ah. How long do you think it would take to repair the bike? Hmm. I'm not a motorcycle mechanic. I can't tell you that much. Oh, yeah, I'll make sure. I'll make sure about that. Yeah, understood. I won't do anything stupid. Oh, tabitid. Well, let's see. For lunch, we had cinnamon rolls and pumpkin bread mac in a baked. Dinner was ramen and fried rice. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, sorry. I'll make, I'll make sure to feed her something green tomorrow. Oh, is she some kind of magical gremlin? Well, whatever, I'll be careful. If anything come, does come up, you'll be the first to know. Hmm. Nah, well, of course we won't put her in any danger. Understood. Alright then, good night. Oh, damn. Okay. Spare me. Gun last. Gun last. I get enough lectures in my waking hours. For some reason, my dreams are always nightmares. <laughs> Alright then. That just leaves 
Scroll down to JB's name on my phone con phone's contact list. Then press the call button. Had to say that I am a man of many collars. <laughs> True. The trip initially I submitted to JB earlier didn't include any reference to staying a night away from my post. Of course, my employer is probably aware that I'm still in Yamanasi. I'd be very surprised if they hadn't been tracking a GPS on my other cell phone this entire time. Still, that doesn't mean I can't get a I can get away with completely blowing off the formalities. Even if I do get in touch, it's easy to picture that shaggy-headed blonde griping and scolding at me again. But if I take the initiative to call instead of making her do it, the voltage of her lightning bolt should decrease slightly. Dang it, Jamie. What's this? You burning the midnight oil over there? Kazumi Eugene, Edison Magna, state it's normal. My current location is Azako's cabin in Yamanashi. Scheduled return to post by 1200 hours tomorrow. End of message. After recording this extremely concise summary of the necessary information, I'm just on the verge of hanging up when I reflexively hesitate. After a moment's pause, I return to the receiver to my mouth once more. Oyasumi, Yudia. Um, the hour being what it is, recording a little extra in the way of pleasantry shouldn't cause any issues. That was smooth. My message complete, I hang up and finally snap the phone shut. <sighs> As I slide the cell phone back into my pocket, a sigh spills unprompted out of my mouth. In the isolated mountain night, the only sounds are the rustling of trees in the wind and the chirping of insects re reveling in summer. <clears throat> I don't mind not hearing people or their machines in the least. But the bugs are fairly noisy in their own right. Oh yes, Japanese bugs are noisy. They're like um, English crickets in a way, like if you hear them all for the night. Just uh, not as loud. I guess it depends where you are. That said, it just makes you feel anxious when things get too quiet. Human beings are pretty hard to please. Hearing nothing but the sound you make yourself is a genuinely terrifying thing. There was a time years ago when I woke up half buried under a pile of soil and sand. Better still, I couldn't remember how I'd come to be there. I must have stayed there for a good three minutes before finally recalling that a field artillery shell had landed nearby. Pushed away violently by the man behind me, I'd fallen roughly into my foxhole as dirt rained down. When I crawled up out of the hole, I noticed that my eardrums were malfunctioning badly. I couldn't hear a thing other than a high-pitched ringing sound. Oof. Yeah, that really makes you dizzy. It was the middle of the night, so my field of vision was just as poor. The small silvers of moonlight trickling through the trees above weren't enough to make out any movement around me. The fear that had been swelling around my gut became a cold dread creeping slowly up my spine. It felt like I might be the only person on earth as if I had been left behind on a dead and empty husk of a world. The night can be very dark sometimes. When I'm facing it alone, I always remember that moment. Do you know what, this whole scene reminds me of uh, Eden from ages ago, feeling like you're the only person on the world. And Eden, I remember years back, that one made me cry, god damn. And it's rare to get me, if anything. So, good lord, it was good. Asapo. Looking up into the sky, I hear, the, I hear her name slip out of my mouth. Just how long am I planning to drag her memory around like a ball and chain? It's not like Asgore's, Asgore wanted her, that herself. She told me flat out, didn't she? If I die, forget about me within a year. It's been a year and a half. I should have forgotten about her completely by now. I promised I would. But it's hard, Asako. Being alone. Oh. Stop sniveling and grub here. You have someone to protect yourself now, don't you? I can almost hear, her, hear the words feel the slap upside the head, but she's no longer here to deliver them. Wow. The next day, just as scheduled, Makino and I returned to the Mihama Academy dorm a little before noon. Although the total length of our trip was barely more than a day, for Makina it seemed to have qualified as a genuine adventure. Nice. From the moment she woke up this morning, the little girl was more hyper than usual. She insisted that just heading back wouldn't be no fun, so after I deposited her in the tandem seat, we ate a quick breakfast of dried fish and a dinner open early for the local fishermen, then drove around on a lightning tour of the major local sightseeing points. Now that's the way you do it. We eventually winded our way leisurely back while taking frequent breaks. <laughs> I 
恥ずかしいながら、えおいおい。I don't understand what you're supposed to be ashamed about. And it's not like we went to Guam or something, you know? Kazami さん、マキちゃん、おかえりなさい。I swear, s a c h i if you mentioned what you were saying on the phone last night. Yeah, we're home. どうでしたかお墓参りの方は。Oh, it's awesome. 楽しかったのよさ。帰りに立ち寄ったタッポーズさんから見た雄大な景色は。Hey, that's in Saipan, your kind Fuji san. And we only made it as far as the fifth station. <laughs> Now it's Hawaii? Incidentally, the things you're waving around with a giant grin on your face are rice cakes with black honey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go to. I didn't go to New Zealand. It doesn't exist. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. If there's anybody from New Zealand watching this, I'm joking. All right. Don't take anything I say seriously. Don't start morphing into abstract geopolitical constructs. So, where did you come from? Oh, you missed me, Yuriko. そのネタはさっき聞いたわ。<笑>ソロモン。ソロモン。そういうネタはもういいから。バンバーレバーマキナスローエネジー、エレベーテッドビヨンドベースラインレベルズインタサミングペラスリークロスとアフレンジー、サカキーサイズヘヴィリー、ヘヴィリー、ヘヴィリー、ヘヴィリー、何<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑>頭は大切にしてくださいね。大事に使えば一生使えますから。<笑> you know how to abuse it to make her forget it! 何か Now,、nah, just wondering where to begin jabbing at that. I mean, the idea of Michiri studying is enough to make you die laughing. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. And if your head ever stops functioning, your life's over. So the second part of the sentence is a meaningless truism. But first and foremost, you're the one who judged a deranged blonde to be a threat and subdued her through blood force. Kazami san ga do shite mo tsukomitai no de a leba, isagi yoku tsukomare masu ga. I see. At times, it's hard being a man. No, 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 no. Tsukomitai gaeru otoko to tsukomare ru no iya gaeru mo na. Mama nara ne mo da na. よくわかんないけど、とにかく静かにしなさいよ。つかんだ。なんか妙にテンション高くない。Well, it seems I put the girl to bed too early last night. She woke up at half past four in the morning today. Didn't seem like she was going back to bed anytime soon, so I ended up leaving a little earlier than planned. We improvised a half assed little sightseeing tour on the way back. And do you know what? That's the perfect time for you, Ju, because he wakes up at that time anyway. それに追加して旅行のバカンス気分の余韻がまだ抜けていないようね。Yep, 楽しかったということだけは覚えていて、何を見てきたのかはまるで覚えていない。<笑>遠足から帰った小学生ってきっとこんな感じなのね。Yeah, about that. 失敬だなお前。ちゃんと山にも行って湖にも行ってきたっつうの。じゃあ何山に登って何湖を見てきたか覚えてる ？Oh, oh, oh. Titty Kaka? Oh, 
Oh, oh no. Once again, making the slip of squeak with unnaturally convenient timing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what did you say? <laughs> Close, but no, they're both the tallest mountains in their countries, but that one's in the Philippines. Also, I don't remember taking you all the way to South America. By the way, that lake really exists, so there's no need for the slipper squeak. <laughs> it does. It does. <laughs> イリスさんあなたわざと言い間違えていないああ熊本熊本わあ、I then again, I didn't see a new side of her, so maybe the whole hyper act is an attempt at hiding her embarrassment. <laughs> Kara. <laughs> she don't want me to destroy her character. Okay, in any case, I'm glad we got back in one piece. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I won't deny I'm a little worn out. Our name's Bobatoro. It's fine for tooling around the neighborhood, but it's not just that. It's just not that suited for long distance travel. I couldn't quite stomach taking that thing onto the expressway, so we came all the way back on local roads. That probably contributed to the fatigue as well. Uh, yeah, that's probably best. Hold on, don't you have a part time job this afternoon? <laughs> to be honest, I wasn't able to get much rest at all last night. I've had a surprising string of days recently where I've managed to get a solid 8 hours of sleep and I'd almost started to forget. But I've never been a deep sleeper and typically jerk awake several times a night. Yesterday was a particularly awful example. It's not like I'm physically exhausted. But I can definitely feel something like mental weariness weighing down on me. So after reporting our safe return to Amane and JB, I apply my eye drops and lie down. Practically the moment my eyes close, some tense cord inside me snaps at last and I tumble down into unconsciousness. He's finally getting that sleep. Seven o'clock, damn. When I heard about the bombing, the sky outside had already grown pink and the cries of Skydas were bringing, oh, beginning to cool down the scorched earth. I love, I love the way it phrases some stuff in this. With a few hours of deep and dreamless sleep behind me, I walk out into the lobby trying to shake off the slight lingering heaviness in the core of my head. Encounter Sakaki there, glued to the television and receive the unexpected news that a bombing has taken place in the vicinity of Mishima Cape Station. Oh. According to the news program, she's watching an automobile parked by the road in the shopping district abruptly exploded around 6 this evening. That's not what I need to know right now. And is Makina all right? Oh shit. I'm sorry? She was right near an explosion? Oh shit. However, Oh. I see. Where is she now? Alright. The word bombing means it wasn't an explosion caused by someone carelessly overturning a fuel tanker, or some other accident of that sort. It looks like the vehicle that exploded was a standard sized passenger automobile. But from the low resolution images in the television news program, it's not possible to identify the model or brand. However, Sakaki is clicking away at her notebook PC as we're watching the show, and eventually finds a better quality photograph taken at the scene on the internet. Through that, we're able to establish it was a German luxury car. A German luxury car. Are they trying to kill Makina? Is her family trying to kill her? The vehicle completely flipped over from the force of the explosives, but as a rule, German automobiles are built sturdy. Yes. The body itself may be damaged beyond the point of repair, but the cabin wasn't crushed or deformed. The cabin wasn't crushed or deformed? 
That's odd. At a glance, I'm willing to bet they use semtex, semtex grenades. Jesus. And the explosion clearly occurred underneath the car. Yeah, because if it was an explosion within the car, it would have blown outwards. So the only logical explanation is it was put underneath uh, one side of the car to make it flip up into the air. So this was no accident. This was an attack. This is a this is a warning. That's what it is, isn't it? It's a warning. Since the interior of the car itself wasn't blown apart, it seems like that they used a shaped charge deliberately set to flip the entire thing over. See, it's a warning! Okay, I'm onto something. Now, it seems to suggest that they didn't know ahead of time which seat their target would be using. Mm, so, it was intended to kill, but they didn't know where their target was. Given such an extensive such extensive damage to the entire vehicle, even if the cavern remained intact, there's no guarantee anyone would get out of the ensuing fire alive. <sighs> Most likely, yeah. イリスさんの家の車が。いや、アイモンツサンフィンク。デビゴー。運転席に専属の運転手が一人。そして後部座席にはイリスケの人間が乗っていた。Somebody <笑> That sounds about right, because she's the one who's supposed to be in charge now, isn't she? Her younger sister? Makin's sister was... But why was she even... <clears throat> it, was a, it was a cover so that they can find Makina. Yeah, that's the one that's that was supposed to, to open before summer vacation, but ended up getting delayed. I remember Amane mentioning something about this. From what she told me, the place was going to be something like a mall focusing on high fashion. Numerous brands had si had signed honest tenants, along with restaurants and a movie theater. In particular, there were some foreign boutiques that would be launching their first stores in Japan there. So its upcoming opening was apparently generating some real buzz. Mm-hmm. It could be that they're using it as a place to hide out in plain sight. So wait, was this was the Semtex aimed at getting a sister or getting Makina? It sounds like it was more or less trying to get Makina. Because of the direction that the car flew in and they don't know they didn't know where she was gonna be anyway, so why do you know so much about this? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Set a thief to catch a thief. Yes. If you want to catch somebody, you gotta know who what they are, who what they're like, you gotta know what they will do in advance. You gotta plan ahead. You need to know that person. Find someone who is that person because they are the best person to find that person. Well, I know what the phrase means. So Oh. Oh, okay, conspiracy sites. Let's have a look. I see. JB's registered on a similar site, actually. It's impossible to join without the recommendation of an existing member. A new account is in the tens of millions of yen, and even the monthly fee is in the millions. I remember her complaining about the ridiculous charges. Wow. So that's like $10,000. <laughs> or maybe even more than that. Because it says tens of millions. But for some reason, the stream of new applicants never seems to dry up. Come to think of it, it's a little disturbing that this girl has already has a membership to this site like that at her age. Well, I wouldn't put it past Yumiko to not be knowledgeable. She's a smart girl. それなりに信頼の受ける
Hmm. What's that something supposed to be? True. これは、あくまでも私の勝手な予測だけれど。イリスさんが実家を追われる原因にもなった誘拐事件。イリスさんが実家を追われる原因にもなった誘拐事件。イリスさんが実家を追われる原因にもなった誘拐事件。イリスさ
Biting her lower lip, she whispered a sympathetic apology inside her mind. I'm sorry, Sachin. Magnus first learned she had a little sister when she was five years old. As the eldest daughter of the family's head, she had been raised as an only child. But when she learned that her mother had borne a child to the branch family's second son only a year after her own birth, she was genuinely happy. At the time, Magnus didn't really understand the implications of her mother giving birth to the child of a man other than her husband. And the reason why that child couldn't enter the main family, or even meet her older sister, were equally mystifying. In the first place, Machina wouldn't even have learned of her sister's existence if not for a butler's careless slip of the tongue. Ooh, so that was how it... Oh. But once she did know, Machina developed a burning curiosity toward the girl she'd never met. Every once in a while, she would pay her sister stealthy visits, observing her life from afar. Every time she spied on that little girl, living a normal life as a member of the branch family, the knowledge, the knowledge that she had a sibling grew more real to her. Many times, Machina would come to the verge of calling out to her, only to hold back at the last moment. Looking at her sisters, clinging affectionately to her stepmother's waist, innocently begging her mummy for some treat, Machina knew the sudden arrival of a big sister could very well shatter the girl's peaceful family. She could never bring herself to take that risk. But Makita didn't stop taking the time to go see her sister. Eventually, she invented a nickname for the girl she'd never spoken to, developing a one-sided make-believe relationship. Even the day she was kidnapped, just before going to a language class at cram school, she'd been secretly watching her little sister from inside her chauffeured car. And that was the last time Makita had seen her sister. Only hours later she was kidnapped, her father was killed before her eyes, and she was consigned to a life in the hospital that would last many years. Makina knew the girl was her little sister, but the girl didn't know her. There was no real reason she had to hide. After a moment's hesitation, she emerged from her hiding place, resetting the bread in her arms. And just as she had done in the old days when in a slightly playful mood, she carefully forced a nonchalant expression onto her face, then began to walk toward her sister. The man in the business suit behind the girl was burning with countless bags emblazoned with the names of expensive clothing stores, no doubt the result of an almost rudely indiscriminate shopping spree on Sadina's part. And she calls her Sachin. But isn't... Sachin, Sachin. Isn't that the same name that she gives Sachi? Sachin. Although it's probably because their names are very close when you do the Sa. So it might not be related. The trip was probably less about buying clothes than it was venting built up stress from the heavy responsibilities of an ex and expectations placed on the family's future leader, Makina Rim. Ah, uh, future leader, sorry. <clears throat> Makina remembered doing something very similar herself even as a child. Been a while, huh? As they walked past each other on the sidewalk, Makina offered her sister a silent greeting inside her mind. They had passed each other by like this numerous times before, although only Makina knew it. Every time it felt as though the words I'm your big sister would slip out of her mouth. But they could never make it past the tip of her tongue and today was no different. It just wasn't a possibility. Her sister's current position was found on her absence. For anything, for another thing, Sadina had almost certainly been told she was dead. Even if it was permitted, Makita wouldn't n know how to begin speaking to her, let alone what they could talk about. Makita glanced over her shoulder, catching a glimpse of her sister being helped into a sleek black car stopped by the side of the road. It was reassuring to see her sister was being taken care of, but that thought reminded Makina that she herself no longer had a place in the house she was born into. She couldn't help feeling a slight prick of sadness. But today, she had a hard-worn family of her own. The students at Mihama. They'd given her things her real family never could. Feeling her heart grow, light, grow lighter, Magna clutched the warm bread against her chest and drew a deep breath, drinking up the comforting scent of wheat. A small smile spread across her face. Once this delivery was over, the day's work would be done. She wanted to run home and see everyone, to give Amanir a call in Tokyo. 
Boyd, Boyd, there we go, Boyd, by those thoughts, she took a step forward and in that instant, the car exploded. <laughs> oh, wow. So that's what happened. Wow. I could not stop reading that, and I had to read all of that, because I wanted to experience that all in one go. So if you're wondering why I'm not saying anything, that's why. I am in the zone with this. Magda felt a flash of heat against the back of her body, almost like a burst of powerful sunlight. Before she could even flinch, a thunderous roar rattled her eardrum so harshly it caused her physical pain. A fraction of a second later, fine particles of something like sand swept violently past her, flying down the asphalt like waves. That's glass. And as the burning wind crawled over her, she saw the lightly downy hair of a forearm smoldering. <laughs> With a strangled half-scream, Machina squeezed her eyes shut just before the massive wave of heat knocked her down onto the sidewalk. For a moment, she couldn't process what had just happened. Crumpled on the hard concrete, listening to the grit gliding across the asphalt, the answers came to her slowly and haltingly as if filtered through the translation of a clumsy interpreter. An explosion? It took a full two seconds for those words to float to the surface of Machina's mind. She picked herself onto her knees, disbelieving, telling herself it couldn't be. But when she turned around, she came face to face with harsh, undeniable reality. Her dumbfounded gaze found a luxury black sedan her sister had stepped into moments before. It was lying upside down, all but consumed in bright red flames. Huh? No, this can't be real. This time her mind couldn't catch up at all. She didn't want it to. She didn't want to accept the reality before her eyes. Just a moment ago, she'd seen her sister from the side, a slightly irritated expression on her face, so close she could have reached out and touched her. Many thoughts were circling frantically around her inside her head as her mind tried desperately to make something like sense out of the situation. But it was all fragments, nonsense, noise. There were no answers she could accept. Somebody was yelling into her ear. She could understand that it was the voice of someone who was worried about her, still sitting there glued to the ground, but she couldn't muster the focus to decipher their words, much less respond to them. Machina didn't move an inch from that spot until, at last, the voice said, "We need to get, we need to get out of here," and firm hands pulled her to her feet. Damn. Yeah, because if she went to a hospital, that means that, that her existence would be confirmed. She's not physically injured, right? Okay. The psychological damage is going to be more severe. So... Literally, her own sister just died after she hadn't seen her for years. You have some influence in your family, don't you, Yumiko? Actually, no, her father is uh, part of uh, the council in the town, so yes, yeah, she would have some power. Wow. Sakaki's words express my current feelings to the letter. I don't know what to do. I don't know how I'm supposed to talk to her. I don't even know what sort of expression I should have on my face when I go to see her. I approach this the wrong way and I might as well end up making things even worse. Thoughts like these rob us of the ability to even try. Damn, if that wasn't a slap in my face then. Wow. But I suppose there is one thing only I can do. Small as it may be. JV. You're on top of things as always. Where'd you hear about that? Yep. Yeah, I am. It's a membership based information exchange where your sort of people gather, right? Something wrong? <laughs> anyway, how much information did you manage to gather over there? They're trying to snuff it, are they? Well, yet. Does it mean there's a possibility of initiating active observation in the future? 
なたの知る必要のないことです。おお、おお、ユリア。そんな声を出してもダメ。Can I come to your place tonight? ダメ。I just want to have some of your home cooking for the first time in a while. Still no good? そんなこと言ったって。ダメなものはダメなことだね。Refuse me that stubbornly, it's as good as admitting there's a high chance the problem's going to get worse. Does this have anything to do with you not picking up your phone lately? <laughs> oh, sharp. The news, show, the news shows seem to be pushing a theory that this was an act of terrorism motivated by the construction of a nuclear power plant. What's the real story? Ah, <laughs>、uh, I see. Sorry. I'm not looking to harass you here. But can you answer two more questions? Whatever information you can give me is fine. How is Makina's younger sister doing? <sighs> oh, wow, so she's just barely alive. Will she make it? If you guys want to check out something that's very bizarre, this is a real、um, case. I remember seeing something. I think Shrouded Hand done a video on it. It's about the The guy who lived after a nuclear power plant、um, meltdown, I believe. And he, he was his body was technically dead, but he was experimented on in Japan, I believe, for 82 days. And it got to a point where his body was just near enough dead, and the only thing that was still alive was his heart and his brain. His skin is, was just gone as well. So if you want to check out something and want nightmares, go have a look at that. It's quite the, quite the story, not for the faint of heart. I wasn't ready for it. But skin grafts and organ transplants, that's bad. I see. No, there's one other. On an unrelated topic, this is the one thing I really want to know. If Makina's sister ends up losing her current position due to her injuries, is there a possibility Makina will be expected to resume that role? Hmm. Let me rephrase it then. Is there a possibility Makina is going to be in danger going forward? Essentially, nothing. My nose is just twitching, that's all. It was basically a leading, a leading question. Okay, so she's actually going to give me something. Okay. ウフ、オッケー。私の見立てでは、70% の確率で何らかの接触があるでしょうね。There's犬は犬らしく主人が紐を引くまで小屋でおとなしくしていなさい。怪しい人が来たら不適されてないでちゃんと吠えるのよ。うん。Can I really 3, You're running out of fingers fast. I believe,、um, oh, I've been watching Hollow Live lately, and I know、uh, Fox Girl,、um, I need to remember what her name was. A lot of them call her Mama, and she said, I don't remember giving birth to you, so all the girls that call her Mama. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I'll be in touch. <sighs> well, then, what to do? It's clear that things are going to get troublesome in a number of ways, but as always, I'm in the dark on the specific details. If JB's telling me to do nothing, that's probably the optimal choice at the moment. 
Even so, that doesn't make it any easy to accept. Get moving before you start thinking too much was a favourite saying of my master's, but JB's fond of acting on the basis of incomplete information is like asking for disaster. <sighs> the problem is with that one is, neither of them are wrong and neither of them are correct. That's a, that's a debatable one and I can see why they would have those different types of worldviews. For now, it might be wisest just to stay on Mac in the side as much as possible, while preparing myself for the possibility of an emergency. I'd say that's probably best as well. There's no need to overthink this. I know what I want to protect. I can see it clearly now. Ideally, I'd love to extinguish the source of this fire before the sparks spread in our direction, but if that's not a possibility, I just need to be ready for when things do get ugly. After all, you won't find many guard dogs with nastier fangs than mine. I've been sharpening these teeth a very long time for this exact purpose. Teeth made to catch prey by the tail, drag them closer, and rip out the windpipe in one bite. Damn, Yuji. Well said. And that'll be it for me on this episode. Wow, a lot just happened. A lot just happened. Oh boy. Seed of the World Tree 9, eh? A 10 I'm at. I reckon we're right near the end of um, Makina's route now, and then we are on only one person left, and that will be Yumiko, and then we're to finally finish something I started five years ago. Woohoo! Wow, my head is throbbing. I shouldn't have done this one with a headache. Oh, but I loved it anyway, but my head hurts. <laughs> I can't win. Oh, but that's it for me this time, guys. And I really do hope that you guys enjoyed it. So I will end this off now and I will say toodaloo. And I hope that you guys have a great morning, a great afternoon, or a great evening. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like if you did subscribe if you want any more from me. And I shall see you in the next video. Sonja, guys. I will most certainly see you next time. Man, I love this series. I really do.